Hey everyone, and welcome back to another Factorial Friday Facts. I'm Exterminator, and thank you again for joining me this week. Uh, we are on number 419, Display Panel and Inserter Pickup Fixes. Uh, so this is, seems like when I first read the title, it uh, seemed a little mundane, but this is actually some really good stuff. So uh, we'll just hop right into it here. This is uh, written by three people, Arendelle, Clonin, and Twinson. And we'll just start off by saying uh, signposts or bulletin boards are a common sight in video games. Uh, you know, we're pretty uh, pretty familiar with this concept in most games. And they say probably not far behind the uh, ambiguous wooden crate or explosive barrel. You know, they provide a nice clean understanding uh, of way, like understandable ways to communicate and stuff. And, uh, you know, generally, like we have a lot, we have several mods in Factorio that do this. Uh, Clonin made one. Uh, which Aaron Dell will go into, and then there are several other variations as well that other people made. Uh, but again, you know, there's only so much you can do with modding, so the devs decided it was time to try to bring this concept into the game, right? And I think this is, I mean, this is something that would be cool or would have been cool to have for a while, but I think especially with the expansion, there's so many new things and items and, and stuff like that, and there's going to be so much going on that I think it's even more important to bring this in now. So I'm, I'm really gl glad that they have made this decision. Uh, so I'm going to do some summarization here, but basically Arendelle starts with the design. So the full functionality of the new display entity will be fully explained further below, uh, but basically all they need to know is an entity that can display any icon of your choice is what they were going for, right? Like item, recipe, or, you know, virtual signal. First version was the mod made by Clonin, as you can see here. Uh, the, the, the issue, though, is the signpost is a 2D structure, right? So it means it's flat and has no depth. Uh, now, technically, Factorio is a 2D game, but, you know, they make their uh, entities have depth. Uh, so, you know, it does kind of not fully fit. And then the other issue is, like, since it has the, the post under it here, uh, it pushes it like into the next tile right so like down here is one tile and then the actual sign part itself gets pushed up into the, the tile above it and that is just not ideal right and then uh, the third thing is the display service ends up as a vertical rectangle with the icons that appear on the display icons on the display are icons that are designed to be seen in a GUI or horizontal plane like the ground or transport belt right and it would Excuse me, I'm sorry for that yawn. And it would um, it would just kind of look out of place because, yeah, again, as a rectangle, the icons are squares, right? So uh, that was kind of the issue with this. So Arendelle did his first iteration. Uh, first design was a quick mock-up of something that would fix a lot of these problems. It would be a broad, blocky, most ho uh, mostly horizontal display service that would work more naturally with the icons we have. You can see here, uh, I like it. It looks like a tombstone, which I, I found kind of hilarious. Um, <laughs> but it actually does look nice. Um I say I, find, I say I find it hilarious just because uh, I die so much in Factorio. Uh, if like one of these was placed every time I died, this would be appropriate. That's that's the only reason. Um, I certainly don't want to be like making light of tombstones as a concept. But anyway, um, the final thing was that the icons tended to look uh, best and be clear on a dark gray background. So that was added too. It's about as far as I go. Uh, as I got with that idea, it wasn't intended to be a proper design. It wasn't done as the usual four times resolution of concept art. Even so, it would it worked better than the signpost, so it was put in the game for a few months and even managed to sneak itself into a few Friday facts, which is interesting because I don't know about you guys, but I definitely think I missed this. I do not recall seeing this before. Uh, so it was either very sneakily done or I'm just not observant, but I don't really remember anyone else mentioning this either. So... It is interesting that these actually were in some Friday facts. Uh, but then we go to the second design. So basically when the time came for the actual design to be made, uh, here we get some iterations, right? And they kind of went with like the combinator circuit network direction for this. Uh, you can see here along with combinators, power switch, and program display here. As such, the new display entity should look uh, like part of that level of technology, right? They want that all to kind of match and blend together. The new design is based on a combinator style, combinator style base. Uh, all the combinators are different, so the base of the display is also the same but different in a uh, consistent sort of way here, right? And we actually see it coming into uh, into shape, right? So the display itself, I went with an SRT cathode ray tube. This sort of curved display service is ideal for aesthetics of that part of the tech tree. A screen of this sort is normally angled forward, but if you look at old NASA displays, a lot of them were angled quite heavily upward. Presumably this is... 
uh, so they can be seen well from a sitting or standing position. For more reasons mentioned earlier, it's best for our icons if the display surface is closer to the facing to facing the camera, which is a 45 degree angle. CRT screen is aligned up to about 40 degrees, so it's nearly facing the screen, but you can still see some of the interesting details on the top, right? So yeah, this, this looks decent. This definitely looks like something out of like, like the 50s maybe, uh, kind of almost like a like a TV or something from the from like the 50s. Uh, the first iteration of the new design was based on the whole structure rotating without changing its form per uh, direction. This made the screen move around based on the entity orientation, which is more consistent for the shape of the object, but it wasn't great to have the icon and text be shifted to the left or right. Uh, so the second iteration keeps the screen steady through all the rotations. This means that the shape of the structure is different from each for each rotation, it was a bit of a struggle to keep the circuit network or circuit connection points in a reasonable place, but it worked out. You can see also, you know, it's more detailed, more color now. I like this a lot. Uh, this this looks really good. This is uh, what popped in my head when I saw this one is uh, Fallout, right? The the game and then also the series. Um, I watched the series. I, I didn't really play much of the game, so the, the series is more what popped in my head. This definitely looks like something from Fallout to me, um, which is not at all a bad thing. It just kind of reminded me of that, but. Uh, we then finish off this section by saying we could have it locked to just one rotate, uh, because, oh yeah, so they could have it locked to just one rotation, but in rota uh, having rotatable circuit connections is pretty important because this is one of the few display focused entities in the game and having wires covering the icon is not what you want, right? So that is, uh, not great. Uh, it does say that this design is pretty new, so we'll need to test some more before calling it final. There's no 3D model yet that will be made if we decide they're happy. If they decide they're happy with this, so we can see some examples and then how it actually works. So this is from Clone and Display Panel functionality. Display panel at its most core and simplest is just a way to show messages to players. So that, uh, so that was a natural first feature. And the display panel GUI, uh, players can type a message to be shown. By default, the message is only visible when a display panel is hovered by the player which makes sense. I like this. Uh, you don't want this message like just shown 100% of the time everywhere all uh, by default. Now you can change that. So sometimes we want the information to be visible all times. So we add an option to set the text to always show in alt mode, right? Uh, and then you can see here. So it does kind of cover stuff up. I have a, I have a different uh, solution in my mind that I would prefer. I know there's already like a ton of hotkeys in the game, but I would prefer it to be bound to a separate hotkey because so so here's the thing, right? I maybe don't want them like I can definitely see how you would want things on most of the time. Like you obviously don't want to have to mouse over each one of these to get this message. But at the same time, this does <clears throat> excuse me does kind of get in the way a little bit. But I don't want to lose my alt mode if I want to get rid of this or like if I don't want to see it at the, at the moment or for a while. So I would really prefer if this could be, uh, I mean, you, you can change your hotkeys, I guess, maybe for this. I'm actually not sure if you can, since it's bound to alt mode. You should be able to, I believe. If you can change it, then I guess what I'm saying is irrelevant. But um, I would like this to just be a separate hotkey, I think. It's how I would prefer, so that I could toggle these on and off with a hotkey, but still keep my alt mode displays. That's how, where I'm coming from. But again, uh, you can pretty much rebind everything in Factorio, so I think think you could rebind this, which should be fine. Uh, but that's just kind of where I'm coming from. I don't know, I'd be interested to hear what you guys think on that. Uh, but you can see uh, as we go further down though, they did have to put in some limitations. So for short messages, okay, but we obviously, you know, they can't be having like paragraphs shown all the time, right? So we made that only the first line of text will show and the full message appears only when hovered. So you can see this is what it would be like just kind of all the time, but then if you actually hover on it, you get the full rest of the message. Now, I did see uh, quite a few comments in the forums and Reddit feedback for this, that it would be nice if there were some icon or like the typical like three dots afterwards to indicate that there's more text. I 100% agree with this because, you know, if you're in someone else's factory or multiplayer, or even your own factory, if you make enough of these things, um, or kind of forgetful like I am, like you don't want to have to mouse over every single one of these to see if there's an adi additional text, right? You like, you want a visual indication like, oh, okay, yes, there's three dots after this, or there's like an arrow icon or something to expand. And, you know, okay, I know there's more information to be seen here. So I think that's like a must with this, uh, because that that becomes very frustrating. <laughs> you have to manually mouse over every single one of these to know if there's more information. Uh, 
so now we go to showing icons, right? So next it felt natural that we allow icons, allow settings icon to show. It doesn't really need any explanation. You pick an icon and it's drawn on the entity. Super straightforward. Yeah, I don't think it really needs to be more complicated than that. So we took it a step further with the show in chart option, which takes the usage of the split panel to the next level. Uh, clicking on the icon, clicking the icon, a map opens the signpost for easy editing. This is quite similar to the custom tag system, but doesn't need any manual management when you add or remove part of your factory. And of course, Corvex made it with made it work with new uh, parametrized blueprints, which is super nice. So stamping down a standard design will have the display panel with the correct icon with perfect alignment. So this is fantastic as well. Now, again, I saw comments on this and I also am a little puzzled. So they're called, so for clarification, this means map. I don't know why they're calling it chart. Uh, maybe it's just like a language thing or I, I don't know. I, <laughs> I mean, I guess, I mean, maps are charts, maybe some more like a technical thing. Um, so I, I don't know, but, but yeah, it, it, this threw me when I initially read this, what like made me realize this was for the map was well, the picture, but then also, uh, the, the thing about custom tag system, which I know is part of the maps. Uh, but yeah, I, I think like personally, I would say they should change this to map like in the game because that would be more clear, I think for people. Uh, but I don't know, it's just a, a little thing, probably super nitpicky. Uh, ooh, we have some some stuff. Is there any any new icons or anything here? Uh, there is not. Oh, this this got me excited for like a, a split of a second. I was like, oh, is this new equipment? No, just the exoskeleton. Uh, but we do have rocket turrets here. So, and then the grabby grabs from space. It's not their name, but uh, yeah, I don't see anything new here. Did, was there anything new over here that I? Man, because now that they said those other ones like snuck their way into Friday facts. Now I'm trying to be like hyper vigilant if there's other random stuff that uh, we missed. I, I don't see anything. Okay, so connecting to the circuit network. This uh, seemed, you know, this is something that needs to be done, but it wasn't initially uh, simple. So they did decide on a simple system, right? You can specify a list message each, each with its own condition. The list is evaluated top to bottom. You can try to arrange them. The first message that passes its condition is shown, which I think makes sense, right? So everything is okay, uh, which basically says uh, everything or, or anything or any signal is greater than zero. So that's great. Uh, if this one's passed, then it would show this instead. If this one's passed, it would show this instead. And then we also have the functionality of using the any signal is a wildcard, which we saw, so you can ma uh, make more dynamic combinator displays, which is great, right? So you, you can definitely do a lot. And then we have the other combinator as well, the new one that was added. Uh, shoot, I, I forget the exact name of it, but is it, it's not the decider. We already have that. I forget. I'm sorry, I'm drawing a blank. It's, I just woke up a little bit ago. Uh, but yeah, so this is super cool because you can see a combinator bank selects a recipe for all the crushers and the display panel shows the current output. So you can see this display panel. It's a little hard to see, but but this one here, yeah. So that's uh, that's pretty neat. I bet people can do some really cool stuff with this. And this, like, GFX does fit in really well with the rest of the combinators. Maybe it needs a tiny bit more work, but I do I do think they did a good job fitting that in. We use display panels quite a bit in our land office parties. They're a great multiplayer where communication is key. Display panels will be coming for free as part of the base 2.0 update. So that's cool. Uh, definitely seems like something that is appropriate to be made free. Uh, and then lastly, we have inserter pickup fixes, which is really good. But there's also a hidden, uh, well, not hidden, it is mentioned, but kind of a bonus buff and uh, just betterment for inserters here. So uh, this is Twinson. Essentially, when playing new fast transport, the super fast one, the green ones here, uh, Twinson noticed a problem. In some situations, even the fastest inserters were not able to pick up items from the belt, which is obviously a big problem. And this is similar to, as you can see over here, how burner inserters are unable to pick up from blue belt, which has been a thing kind of forever. Uh, and that's basically what he said. So fast inserters not able to pick up from underground green transport belt. And then this one is the same. This is at half speed. Uh, looking at them in slow motion, especially in the burner insert example, looks like the hand reaches the item just fine. So it should just pick it up. Uh, if it's close enough, implementing some simple snapping should fix both issues. As usual, it was not simple. <laughs> Inserters have two independent movement speeds, rotation speed, how fast the arm spins on the base and extension speed, how fast the hand extends and retracts. 
After some debugging, it turned out that the extension speed was just too slow. The arm would rotate to the current angle, but the hand would take its sweet time to reach the correct length, so buffing this value for the inserters helped. I also improved the snapping logic, so inserters will snap better to the item when it's close enough, which is great. And the hidden bonus here, which Twinson does mention further down, is this actually is a slight buff to inserters for belt, from grabbing for belts at least, um, because it fixes the issue, but then since the uh, hand or the arm extends speed, like for the hand, it's faster, it actually does slightly buff the inserters when pulling from a belt. Which, yeah, I guess it, because, yeah, when they pull from a what from a machine, they don't need to extend their hand, I think is, is what, I mean, it kind of looks like they do, but that may, that may just be the swinging animation. Um, yeah, so I think this is only from belts, not from machine to machine, but still, buffing from belts is fantastic. You know, it's probably very minor, but it is still a buff nonetheless, which is great. And uh, that's our Friday fact. So, yeah, I, I like this a lot. This is some good stuff. Uh, you know, QL update with the inserters. I'm really, really thrilled that they can now, like, any inserter can grab from any belt. Twinston did say, I, I didn't read it, but basically Twinston did say that it seemed like there was no gameplay benefit, really, to having the inserters not be able to do this. I mean, like, in a way, I can kind of see, because, you know, the very distant technology levels, like burn inserters you can make right off the bat, Blue Belt is a pretty late game tech. Um, but at the same time, like, you should be able to combine whatever tech levels you want. Like, if you have them researched, you know, whatever. If you want to use a burner inserter on a Blue Belt, then I think you should be able to do that. And then, obviously, you want to be using fast inserters or, you know, long inserters on Green Belts. That's the more important part here. That's going to do it for this one, guys. Um, you know, pretty straightforward, fairly, uh, well, I say fairly short, but, you know, it's a 60 minute video, but definitely some really good stuff here. I will say one last thing, which is completely irrelevant, and I've already said this, but I just noticed it even more now. Uh, uh, where was it? Where did I notice that? I think I noticed it like up here. Um, I really hope they update assembly graphics. I'm not going to be like mad if they don't, but, hmm. Things are really looking out of place. <laughs> I think it was it. Uh, where was it? One of these. I mean, you can really tell here with the EM plants, but uh, like when you compare these uh, assemblers to other new buildings in the game, man, they just they're just not it. It's uh, you know, these are many many years old. Obviously, I know it's a ton of work. So again, if they don't get the chance to do it, not the biggest deal really, like in the grand scheme of things. Uh, but that would be a fantastic uh, little bonus for us to get here, I think. Uh, and maybe like refineries and chemical plants, or at least refineries. Chemical plants look decent. They were updated a while ago, but refineries and then like boilers too, I think look kind of not great compared to everything else. Uh, but anyway, completely unrelated. Uh, that's going to do it. Please leave your thoughts below. Uh, I hope you're as excited for these things as I am. And if you are, definitely uh, drop a like on the video. And if you're new and aren't subscribed yet, definitely feel free to, to keep up with all future content. And until next time, I look forward to seeing you all and do take care.